He's regarded by many as the Palestinian Nelson Mandela, Marwan Baghouti, who is currently in an Israeli prison where he's been for nearly a decade. He's serving five life sentences for murdering five Israelis. And over the years, his release has been one of the major stumbling blocks in the Gilad Shalet prisoner exchange deal. With me to discuss this is his wife, Fadwa. Fadwa, the Israelis always said that they would not release prisoners with blood on their hands. But now they are releasing prisoners who've killed Israelis, but they're not releasing your husband. Why do you think not? Um, uh, yeah. It's a political issue. His judgment and sentencing in an Israeli court was all political. The Israelis put him in jail because he's a leader of the Palestinian people and the Israelis don't want there to be Palestinian leaders. He's a symbol of unity between Palestinians. The Israelis are afraid to release him because he can bring about reconciliation between Hamas and Fatah. Many people feel that Hamas was almost happy to abandon your husband because he poses serious political competition to the Hamas leadership. What do you think? Of course, a leader like Marwan Barghouti is very popular in Palestine and the Arab world. A lot of people have been phoning me to protest that he's not part of this deal. I think it's Israel who don't want him out of the jail. Hamas only accepted the deal at the last minute. Why do you think Hamas accepted the deal? I don't know the main reason why Hamas accepted a deal without Marwan. No one here in Palestine understands it. But Hamas was under pressure from the Israeli side. Khaled Michel, Hamas's political bureau chief, promised you that there would be no deal without Marwan. Do you feel betrayed? Right now I'm confused about my feelings because I'm not happy about Marwan. But I'm very happy for all of the prisoners and their families. As a mother, I'm thrilled because all of these prisoners have mothers and I know how they feel having their sons and fathers in jail. In the last 10 years since Marwan was imprisoned, I have traveled all over the world and advocated for the rights of prisoners. So I'm happy and I'm not happy. Do you think that this was the last chance for Marwan to be free? From the moment the Israelis kidnapped my husband, I never lost hope that one day he would come out of that jail. And I'll never lose this hope for Marwan and for all of the prisoners. Marwan is a great leader and the Palestinians will continue to fight for him to be released. President Abbas will not negotiate with the Israelis unless they free our leaders. Am I understanding you right that there can never be real peace between Israelis and Palestinians as long as Marwan is in jail? Yes, that's right. And it's what President Abbas said at the United Nations. He said that peace will never be reached between Israelis and Palestinians until all prisoners are released, Marwan among them. When negotiations between Israel and Palestine start again, the fate of the prisoners will be at the top of the agenda because there can be no peace without releasing all of the prisoners. You argue that the Israelis see him as a great leader and for this reason don't want to release him. But can't the opposite also be true, that because he's a great leader, he has the power to unify Palestinians and he would be a great partner for peace for the Israelis? Israel is not ready for a real peace. They talk about peace, but they don't work toward peace. Because of this, they don't want Marwan out of jail. If he was released, there could be a real chance for peace. Israelis are still building the separation wall. They're still demolishing houses, demolishing olive trees, imprisoning people, building new settlements. If you look at all of this, you'll see that Israel is not ready for real peace. Why do you think Israelis agreed to the deal, especially the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? It was the pressure from inside Israel that made Netanyahu agree. Surveys show that most Israelis want Shalit to come home. But Netanyahu also has a political crisis to deal with, and this is a way to score points. He is only looking out for the Israeli people and not for anyone else. Also, when you look at Israeli society, when it really wants something, it can pressure the government into giving it. It pressured Netanyahu to make this deal, but it's not pressuring him to make peace. I say it again, Israelis do not want peace. If they really did, they'd pressure Netanyahu to make a real and just one. For years, this deal has been delayed over the question of releasing five high-profiled prisoners, among them your husband. So why now? What is significant in the timing that saw this deal being agreed to now? As Palestinians, no one's telling us the real reasons why the deal was made so quickly and why now. 
We are surprised to see how it was done and what was agreed to. I think both sides made concessions, like Hamas, who said before they'd never make a deal without Marwan Barghouti. Do you think the Arab Spring played a role, that Egypt needed to reassert itself as a power, and that Hamas and Egypt are growing closer? Yes, of course the Arab Spring played a very big part in making this deal happen. Egypt wants to play a role. They sponsored all the details of the deal and mediated between both sides. I think the Arab Spring was the most important influence on the deal over the past three months. But Hamas always said the release of Marwan was a red line for them. They would never agree to a deal without him. It's still confusing why the deal's been done without him and other important leaders being a part of it. Do you blame Israel or do you blame Hamas? Hamas did the maximum it could do. Also, this is the maximum they can achieve from the deal. We know as Palestinians how Israel deals with things. For 10 years we've known that Marwan would not be released from prison without a real settlement in place. Does your husband know about this deal and that he's not part of it? What we know from the lawyer who visited Marwan is that Marwan did not know anything about the deal before the media announced it. He wasn't aware of any of the details. No one told him anything. I have not visited him since the negotiations between Israel and Hamas began. I was supposed to visit him, but because of Israeli fears, they canceled the visit, so I will only see him in about a week or two. The lawyer told me his morale was good, he's doing his daily exercises, and he supports all the prisoners who are part of this deal. This deal will not change his morale. Marwan continues to fight for the freedom of Palestinians and for us to live with integrity in our own country. For 10 years, Israel has been trying to isolate him. For three years, he was in solitary confinement. But Palestinians still need Marwan. He's in their minds and feelings, so Israel cannot isolate him. They might have his body, but his mind and his soul are with the Palestinian people. You got engaged to Marwan when he was behind bars. In fact, he got his parents to ask you for your hand in marriage. How difficult is it being married to him? It hasn't been easy. We have four children, three sons and a daughter. Marwan was put in jail when the children were small and I've had to carry all of the responsibility. As a mother, I face all these pressures in the home, but they are not my only duties. If they were, it would be easier. I'm also a lawyer. I have an office. I advocate for prisoner rights. When last did you see him and what did he tell you? What did the two of you talk about? For the first four years in jail, I was forbidden to visit him. Now I go as much as the Israelis will allow me to. The last visit was two weeks ago. Always when I go to visit him, I see him through a wall of glass and I use a phone to talk to him. Each visit is 45 minutes, which goes very fast. We prepare a list, but we never have enough time to talk about everything. For the first 15 minutes, we talk about the children, their issues, family things. Then the next 15 minutes, we talk about the political situation, the Palestinian people, the situation with Fatah. During the last 15 minutes, he gives me a lot of advice, a lot of things to do, people to talk to. We have to do it in this way because he's not only a family man, he's also a Palestinian leader. You've spoken a lot about the rights of Palestinian prisoners. What are the conditions like for your husband and other Palestinians who are being held in Israeli jails? In the last five years since Shalit was kidnapped, Israel did a lot of things to harm the prisoners and make their lives more unbearable. The prisoners, of course, protested. They stopped eating, stopped drinking, many have died over the years protesting against conditions inside the prisons. They won rights, such as the right to education, food, cleanliness, medical treatment. But Netanyahu took all of these achievements away. He put the prisoners in solitary confinement, a small room which is also the bathroom, with lots of rats. It's about 1.5 by 2 meters. Imagine living four years in this room with all the rats and bugs, like my husband did. If Marwan Baguti was released tomorrow, what would he do? Marwan has been struggling for 35 years. He's never taken a day's holiday. If he was released, he would not stop struggling for Palestinian rights. But the first thing he'd do is be with his family and children. He wants to apologize to his children because he wasn't there for them in their teenage years. He wants to take care of them and compensate for the years they missed out not having a father around. After that, he'd have a lot of duties, fighting for freedom, for justice, and building an independent Palestinian state.
Do you think the day will come when you will be the wife of a president? As a wife and mother, the most important thing I want is a husband and a father. I don't care about being the wife of a president. All I want is my husband back. Fadwa Baghouti, thank you very much for joining us here on RT. Thank you.